This is my 1970 Ranchero that my dad said I can have if I got running and I ended up getting it running and the front end is completely destroyed. It drives terribly. Hey dad, I think we need ball joints. So we ordered new suspension and brakes and here it all is, several packages. I think that's all brake stuff. And this is a bunch of front suspension stuff. This thing drives terribly. All the ball joints are really worn out. Before we get started, my dad actually had surgery on his heel a couple days ago. He's doing a little bit better, so we're gonna be limited on our hey dads today. But I think he's gonna still be out here supervising me, telling me how to do this. So let's start by spraying the whole front suspension down with some coil because it's gonna be super, super hard to get all this stuff apart because look how rusty this stuff is. Ugh. Something to pull this plug out. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got the whole brake system off. There's the drums right there. It's looking pretty good right here. Hopefully, our disc will mount right up to that. But now I'm going to take everything that connects this lower control arm off so we can replace that lower control arm. progress today I really underestimated how hard it would be to pull everything apart I'm having a hard time getting this tie rod off of this spindle worked on that for probably 30 minutes but we got a few more things to do tonight so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this and pick it up tomorrow I'm rebuilding the front suspension in my 1970 Ranchero and I cannot get this top ball joint off I beat it with a hammer and this pickle fork so we went to the local tool store in town and picked up this pickle fork attachment for a air hammer. We're gonna figure out how to put this attachment on. Okay, I assume you push this over to pull this out. Let me set this down. Dad also said I can unscrew it this way. Got that attachment out. Look at that new pickle fork attachment. There you go, I think we're going now. I assume you gotta have a lot of protection to use this air hammer, so here you go. Okay, I got all my protection on. I may be yelling because I got earplugs in. Let's get to work. Let's see how this goes. We're back on the Ranchero. I think it is day number four. I've been working on small things after school in the evenings every once in a while. We got everything disassembled except the upper control arm. So that's what we're going to tackle today. And hopefully we can get those done and then put all the new stuff in. Hopefully she'll be rolling by the end of the day. 
I think the first thing we got to do is disassemble the shock towers before we take that spring out of there. I think we got to take these bolts out. I'm not sure. I'm going to start up here taking all these bolts out. I'm going to take these bottom shock bolts out right here and see if I can just pull that whole assembly out. Got everything undone, and I kind of just lifted up on this because I really thought it would be stuck. Look at that. Heck yeah. Now I gotta get the other side. I forgot to turn my camera on, but here's what I did I wire wheeled the whole Will well, so we can spray some paint on it. Now, let's get the other side. See you before. It's all nasty in there. That was a nasty job. That mask really did its job. I got this sort of clean, clean enough to spray some spray paint over it. Look brand new. As my buddy Derek from Biscuit Garage would say, rebuilding, 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 rebuilding. We got everything rebuilt inside of here. Now we're gonna pull these lower control arms because we got some new ones. I think it'll be pretty straightforward just one bolt right here and then come right off. We got both lower control arms off. Now I think we just gotta bolt the new ones back in. Dad's over here working on the disc brakes. How's it going? Well, I'm trying to do a dry run on it on the table here. The Instructions have been photocopied about 10,000 times and it's really hard to tell from the images how exactly everything goes. So we're just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Looks like nice parts. I mean, yeah, that nice, was nice enough. That was a regular spindle that I rebuilt if you saw that short. So or... this is a factory spindle and then there's a cast iron adapter bracket that holds this caliper mount. And then the, calipers go the on caliper there. goes right on there. That's gonna be nice. It's just a little confusing because that caliper adapter, here's the other one. One of them has an L and an R, and to do it like the pictures show, it's got the right hand side on the driver. The one with the right is on the driver spindle right now. So that's why I wanna do a dry run to make sure it's gonna work and have it figured out before we stick them on the car. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, and here are the lower control arms. I think those just stick those in there and then bolt them in with our factory bolts that are over here. I'm gonna start by just dry fitting this in here. See if it even can go in there. Okay. Looks like it's gonna go in there and fit perfectly. Grab our bolt. got both lower control arms in. 
nice and solid. Went ahead and torqued them up. Now I'm gonna replace the bushings that go in this sway bar. They're pretty old, so I got a new set of them. Where did I set those? Right here. So I think those will be really easy to replace. Unscrew two bolts and then put new, new ones in and tighten it down. I got this old bushing off and I got the new one kind of wedged in there. You see how this one's kind of like flared out? I think once you get this one up there and tighten it up, it'll flare this rubber out. So yeah, I'm gonna get this pushed up on the bolts and tighten it down. Got it all the way in there. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. See that now? New rubber in there. Now I gotta do the other side. Dang, two big toms. That was pretty wild. The turkeys about came in the shop. They, I don't know if you could see it because the sun was so bright, but they walked right past the garage door, probably 10 feet from us. And then now they're right here drinking out of the swimming pool. Here we go. There's eight of them, and two of them have pretty long beards, probably five inches. Those are wild turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> Those are not livestock. They're drinking out of a swimming pool out there. They are? Yeah. I got that other bushing in right there, and Dad's working on, what do you call these, Dad? The uh, sway bar link end links. Got that brand new shiny one on there. I went ahead and connected this on the other side. You can do that on this side. I'm nervous about that. Lots of threads sticking out there. I, think it's gonna... I guess we can either cut them off. Well, uh, it'd probably be fine. We'll have to look at it after we get the spindle in place. Yeah. We can just saw it off there. Is this shorter than the old one? It's about the same. Yeah. I don't remember which way that bolt was running. I just couldn't get it in there the other way. So Yeah. it'll be fine. Yeah. And then all we have to do is compress this spring, take the upper control arm out, put the new one in, and yeah. But first, before we compress that spring, we have to go and rent a coil compressor. What's it called? Spring compressor. Spring compressor. Okay. We just got back from the parts store. We picked up. Hang on. I just want to comment on your balsa wood. Hood prop here? Yeah. Or driftwood? What, where did you get this? I think it was Lake Texoma. Is that the best hood prop we can find? I, I can find it. I can. It, it's barely holding it. It's, a, it's holding let's, it. Let's That's... put it in a hole. Okay. That's more better. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Ignore that. We didn't see it. All right. We got, we rented the spring compressor from O'Reilly's because I do not have one that's this style. I think we're ready to Put the squeeze on it and yeah. take that upper control arm off. Yeah, hopefully it goes smooth. I'm gonna run this and you watch what's going on down there. Ready? Yep. Alright, you're probably good. We got this upper control arm all off. I don't know if you can see that, but there's upper control arm. We had trouble getting these undone. We got the impact on it and still couldn't get them off so I, gonna... I probably should have gotten new spring pockets for that i didn't realize that it wasn't part of that upper control arm i think we'll still use them but they are going to be not easy to get off there just got this upper control arm in this vice and i was messing with it and look at that that is not supposed to do that they definitely need to replace I got 
my. Dang. Golly, is that how that was clocked? Yeah, I think so. It's pretty tight. Yeah. I think that's supposed to. Is that supposed to move really? I think so. That's not good. Oh well. I got my piece rebuilt and put on the mount or put on the upper control arm. Can you get it in there? I think so. This stuff's hard when you can't plant your foot. I think we're gonna have to suck the spring up more. Okay. Does that hook onto something or do you just get it bolted in there and then let all the tension off of it? You just get it bolted in there and let all the tension off of it. I think. these down if we can. There we go, that'll help. I'll hop in there and see if you can get some nuts started on it. We're, we're gonna get this one started. You guys are at 3% battery, so we'll get this one done and we'll try to do a better job filming the next one. As much as I hate to do it, we're gonna have to drag this out at least one more evening. We got a few other things going on tonight. It's completely dark out. I don't know if you can see that out the window. Got that one. We let loose of the spring. It's set in there perfectly. Now we gotta do that side. Yeah, I'm gonna pick this up tomorrow. It's not the next day. It's actually been about a week. Dad and I got the car all buttoned up. Dad had all the bearings packed and the brakes put on the spindle where we could just bolt those spindles right in there. Went on like a charm. So this car actually has 14s on the front and 15s on the back. We're talking about wheel size. And these are 15s, pretty big. And these are 14s, which are on the smaller end. The brake conversion kit called for a 15 inch wheel. And we put the 14 on to see if it would clear. And it barely cleared. But I think we have enough clearance to test drive it. And you might have noticed the hubcaps on this car. Dad and I bought those at an estate auction. And I think they go perfectly on this car. Give you a close up on those. I really like those. There was a set of five of them. One of them was dented in, so we just put the cleanest four on. I think they look awesome. Yeah, I think we need to do a test drive now. Sadly, I will not be doing the test drive. I think it's going to have to be dad because YouTube gave us two community guidelines warnings for child endangerment saying I was not old enough to drive the car even though it was on our own land. But I don't know what to tell you guys. Dad will have to do it. So I'm looking forward to driving this car. It's kind of cold. I wish that heater core worked. Yeah. All right, so we have not driven it at all. We got new upper control arms, lower control arms, all new ball joints, sway bar links, bushings, yep. and brakes, disc brakes. Nope, that doesn't work. Oh, no key, key doesn't work. Hit the brakes. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's way better. Ah, oh, it's so much better. You ready? Yeah. unloading all the old brake parts and suspension parts in our scrap trailer and as I'm sitting here I'm seeing our heater core pouring what now is antifreeze onto the floor. We had just straight water in it but now we've got a nice green puddle on the passenger floorboard. Definitely gonna need to bypass that so we can get a new one.
pretty good one. Come on, buddy. <laughs> well, that was awesome. I would say the Ranchero Revival is well underway. Yeah. That was cool. It runs surprisingly well. I think we're a little low on transmission fluid because I was getting a little bit of slippage in between gears there. And we have a little puddle under the lift where it was parked. Yeah. So definitely need to get some transmission fluid in it. And, and my eyes are burning. It's a little smoky in here. Yeah. And and my heater core is leaking coolant. So. Yeah, we've got a big puddle of coolant on the floor. That needs bypassed and replaced eventually. There is still a ton to do on this car, but that right there was cool. Made the disc brake conversion worth it. It wouldn't hold itself on a burnout before. We only had one front wheel holding and it would just push through it. Yeah, that so was awesome. We've done nothing but brakes and suspension. Still have so much to do on it. Yeah. So we appreciate you guys watching. See you on the next one.